guys, I'm Engaged Subscribers. My name is Colleen Paff, and I'm the author of The Great Stink, How Joseph Bazalgette Solved London's Poop Pollution Problem. It's illustrated by Nancy Carpenter. And I'm going to read to you today from the book, not the whole book, just a bit of the beginning. And when I'm reading, I want you to be on the lookout for something specific. I want you to see if you can find or listen for synonyms. Synonyms are words that have the same or just a slightly different meaning from other words. So for example, if I wanted to use a synonym for the word walk, we know that walk means to go from one place to another using our feet. There's lots of different ways I could say that. I could say I sauntered, or I could say I stomped, or I could say I strutted. They all mean to get from one place to another using my feet, but they're all a little bit different. So in the grade stink, I use lots of synonyms, especially at the beginning. That's a little clue for you. So here we go. The great stink. How Joseph Bazalgette Solved London's Poop Pollution Problem, written by me, Colleen Aff, and illustrated by Nancy Carpenter. Here's the title page of the book. I love this. I think it's so funny. No matter how you describe it, smelly, foul, fetid, rank, putrid, bad, or reeking. In the summer of 1858, London's River Gems stank. What created such a revolting smell? No matter what you call it, feces, stool, discharge, dung, number two, or excrement, the answer is gross. The river was full of poop. To find out why the world's largest city had a poop-filled river snaking through its center, and to discover who cleaned it up, we'll need to go back in time to a very different London. Fifteen hundred is the year. The problem starts with sewers. In London, at this time, the sewers have one job, and it has nothing to do with poop. They carry rainwater to rivers so the city won't flood. It's not even legal to dump human waste into sewers. Instead, poop and pee go into deep holes dug in basements or backyards called cesspools. Pee seeps into the ground, while poop piles up and up and up. A full cesspool means more than a smelly basement. It means it's time to hire the night soil men. These men shovel night soil, AKA poop, into buckets and sell it to farmers who turn it into compost for crops. This system works for hundreds of years, but then London's population grows and grows. Now the year is 1819. More people, more buildings, more poo. Flush toilets are slowly catching on, but all that extra water creates a malodorous mess. The night soil men's prices are so high that Londoners look for other ways to get rid of human waste. Some people connect toilets and cesspools directly to the sewers sending pee and poop straight to the river. London is developing a serious poop pollution problem, and there's no plan to fix it. But there's a bright spot in all this muck. It's a baby boy named Joseph Bazalgette. He's small, and his family worries he won't survive. But luckily for London, he does. 1832. Joseph turns 13 this year. He's still small, but he survived London's first epidemic of the dreaded disease, cholera. 6,536 people aren't so lucky. Some of them die after a few days. Some only last a few hours. Everyone in London fears they will be next.
1848 to 49. Members in Parliament, the country's government, are determined to wipe out cholera. They believe it spreads through smelly pockets of air called miasmas. They aim to, to rid the streets of stench by sending pee, poop, and dead animals, horse dung, chemicals, and everything else stinking up the city directly to the river. Parliament demands that all toilets be connected to the sewers, and the sewers, of course, will carry the waste straight to the same place where Londoners are dumping everything else, the waters of the Thames. Unfortunately, they're wrong about miasmas, very wrong. It's not bad air that spreads cholera. It's bad water. Even worse, some water companies sell the river's polluted water as drinking water which continues to spread the disease. But most Londoners believe their water comes from a clean part of the river, so they let any visible gunk settle to the bottom of their glasses, and they drink. In spite of the government's fight against foul odors, London suffers its second and most devastating cholera outbreak, 14,137 people are dead. Oh, what do you notice in this picture? Do you notice anything interesting about the person who's pouring the water? What do you think about that? Once again, Joseph Bazalgette has survived. He's now an engineer with dreams of making London a better, cleaner, healthier place to live. One of his jobs is to map London's sewers. He discovers pipes of different sizes, different shapes, and different slopes in every district. He encounters rotting bricks, blocked pipes, and poor design. In short, Joseph learns that London sewers are a disorganized, haphazard, higgledy-piggledy mess. 1853 to 54, cholera is back. 10,738 people are dead. A magazine writes, Where are ye, ye civil engineers? Ye can move, remove mountains, bridge seas, and fill rivers. Can ye not purify the Thames and so render your own city habitable? One engineer believes he can. And I think you can guess who that engineer is. It's Joseph. So I'm going to stop there. Did you notice the synonyms? There were a lot of them in the beginning. I should go back and look. And I'll give you a clue. There's also a bunch of synonyms at the very end of the book, too. Um, let's see. Okay, here we go. Synonyms for the word stink. Smelly, foul, fetid, rank, putrid, bad, or reeking. They all describe a bad smell. And then synonyms for the word poop, feces, stool, discharge, dung, number two, excrement. They're all different ways of talking about human waste, solid waste. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the story. Thank you so much for listening. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to the Simon Kids channel and check it frequently because they're always putting new videos up there. Thanks and enjoy the rest of your day.